We all love motorcycle riding. In fact, some of us love it so much that we are willing to suffer the harsh weather Mother Nature throws at us every so often. But it would make little sense to do so unnecessarily as there are several efficient preparations we can do to minimize the actual suffering. In today's video, I will share with you my secrets and hacks to staying warm the whole day when riding in freezing temperatures. But besides the low temperatures and sometimes wet conditions, it's actually the wind that is your worst enemy when trying to stay warm. So how do we maximize protection from it when traveling on two wheels? Today I'll break it down into three different levels. And the first one, which I call essentials, will take a look at how to keep as warm as possible without any artificial heating. In the second level, comfort, we're heading into the world of heating gear, both with personal apparel as well as parts for your bike. And in the third and final level, premium, we're going all in when it comes to cold weather protection. So without any further ado, let's get started. One of the most effective ways to increase your overall comfort during cold weather riding is to install a larger sized windscreen. It will deflect the majority of the cold wind away from your body, allowing you to keep a bit warmer. Now my second mod and a classic way to keep your butt warm is to put a piece of sheepskin on your seat. This is a very common thing to do among snowmobile riders up in northern Scandinavia, so it truly makes a difference. The one I have right here is from a Home Depot store and did not cost me more than what a normal lunch does up at the Swiss Mountain Pass restaurant. You can of course also get the largest size one that covers the pillion seat as well as part of your tank, but as I like to keep things tidy and I don't have a passenger when it's this cold outside, I went with the smaller one. All in all, this is a fairly cheap way to increase your comfort during cold weather riding. And if you have upper crash bars installed on your bike, you can mount a set of accessory bags to them. Not only will these provide you with some extra wind protection for your knees and legs, but also enable you to bring essentials such as a toolkit, spare riding gloves, luggage straps and additional insulation gear. But let's be real, the very parts of your body that will begin to hurt first are your fingers. How many times have you not ridden in cold weather and felt that burning tingling in your fingertips even when using thick gloves and classic hand protectors? Well, it's about time you make it a thing of the past by installing a set of hippo hands. These will completely eliminate all winds of your hands and fingers allowing you to stay nice and warm with full mobility. They attach to my handlebars in no time and are simply a no-brainer for cold weather riding. The model Rogue allows me to see all buttons and switches while the Alcon provides maximum protection from cold winds and can even be used with summer gloves if you have heated grips. Every now and then it's good to take breaks while riding, especially when the climate is a bit colder. Something I always make sure to bring on my cold weather rides is a thermos with warm drink, whether it's coffee, tea or hot chocolate. And this is a great way to refresh and heat up from the inside. And when the temperature is below the freezing point, a hat and a set of gloves are always good to have close. And to top it up with some low cost luxury, you can have a few hand warmers available. And the ones I have here start working as soon as I open the package as they react with the oxygen in the air and will generate heat for up to 12 hours. You can either warm up your own hands with them or even better, Tuck them inside your riding gloves and they will be warm and cozy when it's time to head on. But what good do all these mods do if you don't have some proper personal gear to protect you from the cold? After testing different gear and solutions for quite a few winter riding seasons, I'd like to share with you a system that keeps me warm hour after hour. But before we jump into the different garments and why I use them, here's a quick tip. Don't go with a tight-fitting Gore-Tex suit if you want to stay warm in low temperatures. 
It is actually the amount of trapped air inside your suit that will keep you warm, not the Gore-Tex itself. However, you don't want to end up on an excessively large fit either, as this might cause the protection pads to start moving during an accident. So choosing a Gore-Tex suit where you have dedicated straps for different pads will definitely help you to stay both warm and safe. So with that said, let's jump into what I use and why. If we start off with a base layer, here I always use a long sleeve shirt and long johns, both made out of merino wool. And why merino wool? Simply because it provides good insulation, transports moisture, keeps me warm even when it's wet and it doesn't itch or smell. And the Teton series from Climb I'm using today is super comfortable and does what it's supposed to, wicking moisture away and keeping my skin dry. So moving on to the mid-layer section and the very thing whose only objective is to keep me warm. Here it varies what I use all depending on what the weather is like and as it's dry today and the temperature is below freezing point, my choice this morning fell on the warmest mid-layer I own. The Maverick Down Jacket from Climb. This fluffy yet small packing mid-layer keeps me warm even in minus 8 degrees Celsius or 17 degrees Fahrenheit. However. When the weather is wet and the temperature is above the freezing point, I always go with the Climb Override Jacket. This one has a thin insulate as main insulation, which means that it's moist wickening and fast drying. Paired with a Gore-Tex suit and the merino wool base layer, I stay warm and dry in bad weather. One important thing to mention is that when choosing a mid-layer, make sure that its arm length is long enough to be pulled out of the cuffs of your riding jacket. This is to keep your wrist and artery warm, as your riding jacket will be as cold as the surrounding temperature. And when it comes to mid-layer pants, it's something I personally don't see as a necessity, as my GS Adventure provides more than enough wind protection for my legs. But if you ride a bike that doesn't deflect the wind away from your knees and legs as much, I strongly recommend you to use a pair. And we're making our way to the main piece of gear, which is the Gore-Tex suit itself. Since 2018, I've been using the Badlands Pro from Climb, an exceptional riding suit for all year round use. This is their latest model with the built-in D3O protection and lots of zippers for ventilation during the hot summer months. But as it's rather cold today, let's focus on why this suit combined with the base and mid layers I just showed you has been my absolute favorite for years. One key aspect of why I've been using high-end Gore-Tex riding suits ever since I started riding adventure bikes back in 2015 is that the waterproof shell is on the outside of the suit and not on the inside as a removable liner. This design has two big advantages. The suit itself won't soak up like a kitchen sponge during longer periods of rain and it will trap the warmth my body produces in my base and mid-layer garments. For the third season in a row, I'm using the Alpine Stars Tech 7 Dry Star Boots, which is the waterproof version of the Tech 7. They offer excellent protection from impacts, but also from cold winds. In fact, I never use anything but regular socks inside these boots, as it's enough for me down to about negative 5 degrees Celsius or 23 degrees Fahrenheit. However, if you're struggling with cold feet during riding, I suggest bulking up with a pair of thicker wool socks. But again, it's important that you have enough room inside your boots to trap warm air and not to have a tight fit. The tighter fit your boots have, the colder your feet will be. So next up are gloves. Now as I'm using hand covers, I don't need to wear super thick gloves to keep my hands warm. These gloves have been with me ever since I bought my first GS, which was back in 2015, and they are still going strong during chilly days. And to top it off for personal gear, I usually use a thinner balaclava for extra warmth around my head. And to keep my neck warm, which is crucial during winter riding, I always use the Lone Rider buff, which I bulk up inside the collar of my mid layer. The last item, but perhaps the most important one, is my Climb Cryosprawl helmet. This is a lightweight helmet made for demanding adventure riding, weighing in at only 1500 grams. 
It's equipped with a transition visor, meaning that it will turn dark automatically during bright and sunny days. But the main reason why I'm using a dual sport helmet is that the field of vision is much better due to the shape of the visor, which also allows me to use motocross goggles. Now that we covered the essentials of staying warm during cold weather riding without any artificial heating, let's step it up and take a look at how we can increase our comfort even further. Something that's very common on today's ADV bikes is grip heating. On many models, including my BMW R1250 GS Adventure, heated grips are available as an original accessory. And once you've experienced the comfort of having heated grips, it's definitely noticeable when you ride a bike that doesn't have a set. However, sometimes heated grips are not available as an original part from the manufacturer, especially if you ride an older bike. But the good thing is that there are third-party universal heated grips available, so a hot tip, pun intended, is to google your bike model plus heated grips and I'm sure you'll find something useful. But even if we bulk up with good base and mid layers, the cold might get through anyway, especially in more extreme conditions like negative 10 degrees Celsius or 14 degrees Fahrenheit, which is not unusual for winter open mountain passes. So this is where artificial heating will make your day a lot more comfortable. So underneath my mid layer, I'm using the Kai's Apparel Heating Mist. It has a dual power design, meaning that it can run off my bike's battery or with a portable battery, and there are three different levels of heating which I can swap between with a separate controller. I have high, which is full power, medium, which is two thirds of full power, and low, which is one third of full power. On full power, the portable 5.2 amp hour battery lasts around three and a half hours, while on the low setting will give me around 10 and a half hours of heating. I tend to only use the portable battery when I get off the bike to stay as warm as possible during breaks or as a backup in case my bike dies and I need to wait for road assistance. And beside the heating features of this vest, it also adds a bit more insulation whether it's turned on or not. Now that should keep us warm, right? Well, we're not done yet. I've compiled a kit that can make any rider defy the cold. So let's go all in and take a look at the ultimate cold weather setup. Just as with heated grips, once you've experienced riding a bike with a heated seat, you will truly miss this luxury when you don't have it. The OEM heated seat I have on my R1250 GS Adventure can be adjusted in 5 levels depending on what I prefer at the moment. But most of the time I alternate between 3 and 5 where 5 is the warmest. If you're looking for the ultimate upper body warmth, a heated jacket is the way to go. And just as with a heating vest, it connects your bike's battery, but due to its higher power consumption, it's not recommended to run the jacket of a portable battery. The Kai's heated jacket generates heat for my entire upper body, including my arms, keeping me exceptionally warm in cold weather. And even when it's not activated, the soft shell itself provides good insulation, which means that this jacket can also be used as a regular mid-layer. And like I mentioned earlier, when choosing a mid-layer jacket, make sure that the arm length is long enough to keep your wrists warm. So we have a large windscreen, we have hand covers for the handlebars, we have heated grips, we have a heated seat, we even have a heated jacket and a Gore-Tex suit to keep us dry. So what more could we possibly ask for? Well, there is one more thing that is included in my premium level and that is heated gloves. If you use a set of these in combination with the hippo hands and heated grips, I guarantee that cold and stiff fingers will be a thing of the past no matter how cold temperatures you decide to ride in. The Kai's heated gloves plugs into my heated jacket via the connection cables in the sleeves, which means that the jacket provides them with an independent power supply. I can set the power individually on the gloves by pressing the button on the top, while I control the jacket's temperature via the separate controller. 
And just as the vest and jacket, the heated gloves have high, medium and low power modes so you can fine tune the temperature to your personal preference. And if you'd like to run the gloves together with the heated vest, you can either pull the included extension cables through the sleeves of your regular mid-layer or riding jacket or simply use a set of the portable batteries that are stored inside the cuffs of the gloves. On full power, the portable batteries last around 2.5 hours and on the lowest setting around 7.5 hours. And that wraps it up for this time guys. I hope I could inspire you to start to find the cold and to extend your riding season. And if I did, please do give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you want to see more of this content in the future. And for those of you who are about to comment, oh, when it's that cold, I'll just take the car. Firstly, cars don't lean in the curves and secondly, they are not as adventurous as motorcycles. Thanks for watching guys, and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Stay warm! What's do if you don't have some personal, pro proper personal gear? Ah, okay. And extra. <laughs> Good. Was it good enough? Yep. One key aspect ratio of why I've been using... Wait, one key aspect ratio? Why did I say ratio? Swap between with a separate controller. The, the, I'm talking like The ultimate cold riding weather cycle. Come on! Ah!